Hello, this is Faith at Faith in Books. Um, I thought I would post a little video now, uh, today, Monday, um, because I don't think I'm going to be able to post anything until maybe Sunday evening. Because um, it's a busy week. Um, we're actually going away this weekend for our 31st wedding anniversary. Uh, tomorrow is the actual anniversary, but we're going to go away to a bed and breakfast which is something we've been doing um, the last several years. Uh, oh, just lost something here on my laptop. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that, but that means we're leaving Friday, hopefully Friday afternoon, and we won't get back until Sunday afternoon. Um, and since I joined NaNoWriMo, and I'm doing pretty well, I'm up to 5,550 words, which isn't great, but it's not bad. Um, that's as of this morning, early this morning. Um, I want to front load, you know, I want to, I want to use extra time to work on that. And so instead of thinking about my little booktube uh, channel, I'm going to focus on NaNoWriMo. So I'm just going to make this video now and talk about a few things and then come back on Sunday. So, um, so let's see, what did I want to talk about? Um, first of all, this has nothing to do with book two, but I'm going to plant garlic for the first time. <laughs> so right after this video, I'm going to go out in the garden and plant garlic, and I'm excited about that. I could not find the garlic that I had ordered weeks ago, and I just found it. So I'm very excited. And that's there to remind me that that's what I need to do right after I finish here. Um, the second thing I was going to talk about is actual books. Um, I, uh, just, I've started, uh, nonfiction November. I read De Profundis by Oscar Wilde, which isn't long. It's, it's a long essay or letter. Um, just gorgeous writing. I really admire his writing and some of it is really just beautiful. But, you know, he was messed up too. And so, uh, it was, it was kind of confusing and, um, just on a whim, I decided uh, from my list of books that I had selected for non uh, nonfiction November, I picked up The Four Loves by C.S. Lewis. And amazingly, it sort of picks up where Oscar Wilde, uh, you know, leaves off in that it's talking about beauty and love and, you know, uh, just all... Uh, uh, pleasure, what pleasure is, and how that ties in with this. And um, it's really, really deep stuff. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. He talks about uh, need pleasure as opposed to appreciative pleasures. Need pleasure is the pleasure you feel like his example is when you're really, really parched and thirsty and you have a drink of water and it just tastes so good. It's so satisfying. That's a need pleasure, but an appreciative pleasure is something that just beautiful that just happens. Like you're walking down the path and you smell the lovely fragrance of some flowers. You didn't need it. You didn't expect it, but you appreciate it when it comes. And um, he ties that into need love, love that we need. Like if you're a baby and you need your parents' love as opposed to a more disinterested love. Um it's very, it's, I mean, you really have to, at least I really have to think. Like, he'll say some stuff and I'll be like, whoa, what was that? And I'll have to read it over again. So, um, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. And I love that it's really kind of connects with themes that uh, started with uh, Oscar Wilde for me. So, I'm excited about that. And that's the, that's the actual in real life book that I'm reading. And then I also started reading on my Kindle, The Eden's Outcast for the uh, A Year with Louisa May, which was something I think co-hosted or maybe just started by Kate Howe. I really enjoy her booktube channel a lot. She's, she's really, really wonderful. Um, and so I started reading that too. Uh, I like to have something on my Kindle so I can read it at night and it's backlit so I, I don't have to turn on a light. Um, so I've got those two going now. And then the last thing I was going to talk about was, and this is something that I'm going to bring up more, but I'm just introducing it right now. And that is the fact that I am working to 
take the third level of the National Latin exam, which happens every March. So back when I started homeschooling my kids, way, way back, um, Latin was sort of a big thing. And there was a, a Latin teacher that lives not too far from here. In fact, she's become a dear friend. She just had surgery last week. She's recovering from that. But anyway, um, and so I wound up taking Latin, trying to learn Latin alongside my, my uh, kids uh, as they were in high their high school years. And I managed to take the intro level of the National Latin Exam and the first and second level. But then I have this big gap and I can't get any further. I even taught Latin for several years at a co-op, but just at the introductory level. I've never gotten to a place where I could sit and read Caesar or somebody like that. Um, I'm, and because I'm learning at an old age, I don't retain the grammar and all that stuff. So I'll, I'll memorize these paradigms. I'll know them for a while and then I'll just forget them. And I have to learn them all over again because something else comes up. Life distracts me from it. I'm not steady or disciplined in my in my study. So it's taken me a long time. I'm frustrated. I'm going to be 60 in April. I want to take the level three national Latin exam in March. And that's the level, that's the last grammar level. And then when you get to level four is when I think you're actually, you can choose either poetry or prose. So you're actually getting into the meat of the language by the time you get to the level four exam. So I am studying in November, I was going to start disciplining myself and really preparing for this because I have so much review I have to do and then I have more stuff I have to learn. Um, but then on a whim, I, I signed up for national, uh, I mean for the uh, NaNoWriMo. So that's taking up time. So I'm not going to study as much in November as I could possibly, but at least I'm going to get started. So I just thought I'd mention the books that I'm going to use because if there's anybody out there in booktube land who wants to learn Latin, the intro level of the National Latin Exam is a really easy level that if you started now and just did self-study, you could do it. And then you would have your toe in the water, you know, and you could move on from that. It, it is doable, um, even as an adult, just doing it as a kind of a lark. Um, Anyway, I'm using the Memoria, Memoria, Memoria. I'm really bad with pronunciation, even though I'm studying this. Memo Memoria Press Guide to the National Latin Exam. That's what I'm using. This is the uh, all the grammar up through level two. This just goes up to level level two. Um, so uh, I've just started studying that, and that's all the all the uh, vocabulary and grammar. Uh, and they do a lot of cultural and historical stuff, too. So here, here you have clothing that they wore. Uh, you get questions on that. Uh, their houses, what kind of houses. Um, you have to know geography. You have to know the gods and goddesses. Um, so they do that kind of thing, too. Um, here's a map. You have to know the geography of the Roman Empire. But then... You know, what you really need to know are the declensions and the uh, um, conjugations and all the pronouns and all that sort of stuff. So all the cases. Anyway, so I am going to try. I'm going to try and do this. Here you go. Here's a picture of some paradigm to study. Um, so that's just to get me up to level two, which I have taken before, but a long time ago. Um, so that's to get me up to level two. And then to get me up to level three, I started this workbook, which actually is a really cool workbook. It, it gives you all the stuff you need to know, and then there's just exercises to do to practice. And you're basically reading uh, paragraphs, like uh, just pulled from famous uh, things that were written, this one is Aulus Gellius Noctos, Noct, Noctes Atticae. It, it depends on whether you want to do ecclesiastical or classical pronunciation. I always switch back and forth. Um, anyway, this is here's Cicero. This one's Cicero. And then they'll ask you questions about it. So I'm looking forward to using this. And <laughs> I also got the answer key. 
so I can teach myself. Um, but I'm going to come on and um, talk about that in more depth. I don't know if anyone else is interested at all, but, uh, but I like to talk about it, so I'm going to do that. Um, and I am going to do the Dream of Gerontius um, later on in November. I'm going to try and finish that. I recognize that's a very narrow interest that maybe nobody else cares about but me, but it's, I, I just want to do it. So, so I will do that. So anyway, so that's, that's what's up with me in the life of my mind, other than, uh, you know, watching little children and loading the dishwasher and doing the laundry and that sort of thing. So, um, I'm really enjoying the four loves and I'm really fascinated by uh, learning about Louisa May Alcott and her father. Her father is really a fascinating person. Um, and those are my two books right now. So anyway, this is just a chit chatty kind of thing. And I guess I will see you all next Sunday. Bye.